I call to order a special meeting of the Planning Commission. Phyllis, your roll call. Chairperson Bob McCool. Here. Vice Chairperson Lisa Ritchie. Commissioners Phyllis Harden, David Harper. Here. Jerry Malia, Ben Miller. Here. Jason Reese. Here. Anthony Stewart. Steve Whitty. Here. Town Planner Stephen Williams. Here. Town Attorney Dan Harvey. Here. All right, now we have uh, time for public uh, comment on uh, consent agenda or non-agenda items. So if you have comments related to the upcoming public hearing, you can save those for later. But if you have something that's not on the agenda or part of our minutes from last time, feel free to come up. All right, there's none. So let's move on to, we have the minutes from the January 15th meeting. I'll entertain a motion from someone. I have one. Thank you. Or corrections, go ahead. Uh, do you have your mic on? I thought that in addition to the uh, recommendation to proceed with the overlay plan for our original town, we made some recommendation relative to continuing the work on the new marketplace. Yeah, I thought so too, but didn't didn't we have a vote on a on a marketplace? Do you remember? I I, I sort of remember that too, and I couldn't remember if it was an official motion. And recommendation, or whether we just. I, couldn't the exact I haven't gone back to look at them or to review the video, but I can, and I didn't look at the minutes yet. So, but I'm happy to clarify. That's my okay. recollection too: is that we we split it up into two parts and made two different and we had motions two, yeah, on Yeah, two it. different motions. You, you can also you can always just postpone it, and, you know, so you have time to review it, and then you know what I mean, and then approve it at the next meeting. Okay. If that's something you'd like to do. Yeah, that sounds fine. We don't have to do anything to do that. Just. Well, you, you want to make a motion to. Um, okay. To just table it until the next. Okay. Next that sounds meeting. good. All right. Any other corrections that we know of? Well, just one. The date at, at the top instead of the eight, nine, It says January fifteenth, two thousand eighteen instead of two thousand nineteen. Ah, thank you. Good catch. Yeah. Really important. All right, I, I, I'll just go ahead and make a motion to table the minutes to have Phyllis review the recommendation for the Superior Marketplace to confirm whether we put that in. Okay. Second. I'll second. All right, second for Commissioner Reese. All in favor? Okay. Okay. All right, so we have a public hearing coming up to review and comment on a request for a subdivision plat for blocks 26 and 27 of downtown Superior and a final development plan for the northwestern portion of block 26 and comment on vested property rights request. Uh, Phyllis, do we have proof of publication? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Um, and Stephen, do we have a staff presentation? We do. Okay. There are 3D in this? No, right? Or if we do? Oh, yeah, we, we do. We got Chase. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Can you kill the lights? Thanks. Uh, good evening, Stephen Williams, town staff. Uh, tonight's development application involves a final subdivision plan to create uh, blocks 26 and 27 and a final development plan to develop the northeastern portion of block 26 within downtown Superior. The images shown here reflect the townhome that Thrive is proposing. In total, 19 units are proposed. Um, the units will be grouped into three, four, and five uh, building clusters as reflected in the block place diagram uh, below. Uh, Chase Mullen, our 3D imaging consultant, is here to clarify how this proposal will appear within the 3D model that he's created for downtown. Uh, and Jay Garcia of Thrive Homes, as well as Bill Jinks from Marcy Superior are here, along with their design consultants, and they have a presentation of their own. The subject property is located within planning area three of downtown Superior, the area reflected in yellow uh, on this land use map from the PD, uh, designates the majority of planning area three, including all of block 26 uh, for residential uses. Block 26 uh, lies on the southwest side of Discovery Parkway, uh, just south of blocks 14 and 25. The land use map from the PD uh, is on the upper left here. Uh, it clarifies that the platting portion of this application was anticipated through the 2006 PD update, which was PD number three, uh, as streets nine and 10, uh, and they were to be added as public rights away in order to accommodate, accommodate the developments of block, blocks 26 and 27. 
And as reflected on the bottom right in the context plan for Thrive, uh, Thrive is only proposing to develop the northern portion of this block. Uh, the associated plat for blocks 26 and 27 has been confined to the platting of the right-of-way uh, for Central Park Circle, which is what streets 9 and 10 used to be uh, called, but they're formally labeling it Central Park Circle, and then creating uh, block 26 or block 27, and then the remainder of block 26 uh, to the south and to the east. In addition to dividing Superlot what's existing uh, Superlot 4A into blocks 26 and 27 and platting Central Park Circle. The proposed plat also clarifies how the northeastern half of blocks 26 would be divided into 19 lots, as well as four outlots to allow for Thrive's uh, townhomes. Lot sizes would range from 1,543 square feet to 2,063 square feet. Each of the 19 lots proposed would front Discovery Parkway and be served by uh, an access lane uh, to the rear that parallels Discovery Parkway that's shown in gray. Uh, that's platted on outlot A. Uh, as clarified in the FDP, only one product type, a two-story townhome, is proposed on this portion of Block 26. In addition to the 19 lots, uh, Thrive is proposing four outlots, three along Discovery Parkway shown in green, uh, which will be landscaped and largely serve for, pub be ser serve for public access and utility purposes. And then outlot A, as I mentioned, shown in gray, will be platted. Uh, privately owned and maintained uh, by the Metro District and serve as the ac access drive to these townhomes. Uh, the FTP portion of this proposal clarifies that the development improvements and standards um, that Thrive is proposing for Block 26. The cover sheet includes both parking and site data tables to clarify where standards are met and where Thrive is requesting an exception. The parking table uh, clarifies that two garage parking spaces have been afforded for each of the units proposed. Uh, Thrive's townhomes are designed uh, with two bedrooms standard. An optional, an optional basement finish could add an additional bedroom and keep Thrive compliant with the required private parking spaces uh, since they're proposing two per unit. Uh, Thrive is also proposing six guest parking spaces where only two are required. Thrive's site data table is blown up enlarged on the right. It clarifies the land use distribution and proposed setbacks and building heights. Uh, the only setback that currently applies to this area is a, two, a minimum of uh, two feet and a maximum of eight foot setback required along Discovery Parkway. This is where Thrive is requesting their exception. Uh, they're asking for their units uh, to be sited further from the right of way uh, between 12 and a half feet and 20 feet to account for an existing utility line and to also account for the change in grade that occurs between their home sites and the already built uh, right away within discovery. Although no setback standards apply, other setback standards apply to this proposal, staff's also requested uh, for their side and rear setbacks to be included in this table. Thrive is proposing a five foot minimum rear setback and a 4.3 minimum foot side setback, which will afford over eight feet of building separation between their units. Thrive is also shown uh, to meet the maximum 32 foot height requirement for this block. A context site plan is provided to illustrate the broader context regarding how block 26 will relate to the surrounding uh, blocks within the town center. Vehicle access to Thrive's uh, lots will be provided via incline lane. That's the uh, private drive proposed within outlot A. Uh, this, this drive parallels Discovery Parkway and bisects block 26. Incline Lane will tie into Central Park Circle in two locations. Uh, one is just south of Lot 1. Maybe the mouse shows it better. Just south of Lot 1. And one is just south of Lot 19. Although Central Park Circle will be platted and provide access to these lots via this application, the actual FTP to improve this street is currently being reviewed as part of a development application for the remainder of Block 26 and for all the Block 20 seven so consequently staff has added a condition to this fdp that the right of way actually be built uh, before any co's can be issued for thrives townhomes so this approval can go forward and they can proceed with their building permits but co's cannot be issued until we actually catch that other application up and they have a paved uh paved right away to get them to their lane in addition to vehicle access this plan sheet illustrates uh, the pedestrian and ada routes that have been incorporated into the design the topography for the site prevents units from being accessed uh, 
directly from Discovery. So you'll see here on the next slide that all of their townhome units require stairs to get up from the front of the units. Um, and, and this is really due to the elevation differences between the right of way and their platted lots. Um, this elevation difference also exempts uh, this block from needing to meet Title IX requirements. Uh, staff has worked closely with Thrive and required a third party review to confirm this finding. Um, that was included with their uh, application materials to staff. Uh, Thrive nevertheless, nevertheless has designed block uh, 25 to include 12 visitable units, which will rely on incline lane and zero entries through the garage uh, in order to allow for uh, handicap um, visitors. And these 12 points would actually meet Title IX requirements, so even though they're not required to do it and they're doing it kind of in a, uh, a roundabout sort of way in, in, in getting the visibility points instead of a, like traditional access points, they are still making the effort to, uh, to satisfy Title IX requirements. Um, Thrive site plan sheet provides a closer look at Block 26. At this scale, the building footprints, setbacks, and details like utility locations and retain, retaining walls are clarified. All of Thrive's units are oriented to face Discovery Parkway, and each townhome is afforded both a front porch and an individual set of stairs that connects the sidewalk uh, to the south side of Discovery Parkway. It connects their units to the sidewalk on the south side of Discovery Parkway. Setbacks from Discovery are proposed uh, as 12 and a half feet for their first 13 lots. Those are the lots uh, further northwest, so all of these units are at 12 and a half feet. Uh, it jogs up to 20 feet here for uh, lot 14, and then it goes back to a little bit less, 14 feet 8 inches for the remaining five units uh, on lots 15 through 19. Water and sewer services are proposed to uh, extend from Discovery Parkway, while you dry utilities will be routed uh, from, incline, from incline lane and tie into each building corners along the alley. The primary underground stormwater improvement is located within outlot C, uh, and an inlet carries that water uh, underground through that uh, outlot uh, to the existing infrastructure within Discovery Parkway. This plan sheet also includes three section views of incline lane to illustrate the standard width, uh, the drive uh, width, which widens for the on-street parking that's proposed, and then this pinch point is the most narrow. So there's. Uh, three different sections to kind of clarify the three different widths that, in, that occur along the incline lane. A circulation and access plan was also included with this, with this proposal to illustrate how the proposed townhomes meet emergency response and general access standards. Staff required an additional detail that's been included within block uh, 14 to clarify how access in and out of lot 19 uh, would be accommodated. Uh, both Public Works and Rocky Mountain Fire served as referral agencies for this proposal, and they both indicated their support for this design. Thrive provided uh, two sets of building elevations in their plan set. The black and white version shown here provides more of the details regarding floor heights, roof pitches, and uh, proposed materials. Because Thrive is proposing to build at the max height of 32 feet, staff requested an additional detail to demonstrate that this maximum would meet, be met in all instances and to also illustrate uh, how their measurement meets uh, town code requirements. So they provided a, uh, an average elevation, grade elevation that they show on each of their um, elevations, and then they show this dashed line is that 32 feet from that average grade, and this is the worst case scenario, uh, building one uh, for lots one through three, and it is shown to be underneath that 32 foot height limit. The front elevation also clarifies that the general architectural style and materials proposed. Thrive is proposing a combination of horizontal uh, lap siding here and then the vertical board and batten siding uh, underneath the gables and underneath the, the shed roof on the front elevation. Uh, roof lines also feature, feature a mixture of these uh, roof types in order to kind of break, break it up. And then the natural grade on the site uh, also breaks up the roof line as you see it steps up. Uh, here on lot one. Thrive's rear elevation on the bottom right uh, clarifies that it's primarily uh, horizontal lap siding that's proposed, but the roof lines are also broken up by varied uh, gabled uh, roofs. So although the main gable orients to the left and to the right, they also have gables that orient back towards the alley to break up that roof line. Mm -hmm. 
Like the Remington proposal for uh, Block 25, uh, Thrive has also provide, provided two side elevation finishes, a standard finish that's shown on the right, uh, and an enhanced elevation that's shown on the left. Both finishes feature a stone wainscot base, and the standard elevation is characterized by the horizontal lap siding, as you see with all the, uh, all the lines. Uh, the enhanced elevation includes uh, an awning over the double window on the main level, and then board and batten underneath the gable to help break it up. So the enhanced elevations would be on lot one on this end, uh, between uh, on the end of lot 10 and on lot 11. And this is where outlot C is, where the, a path, the main pedestrian path connects incline lane back out to Discovery. And then again at the end of uh, lot 19. Uh, the plan face also includes this block perspective to show, um, to help illustrate how Thrive's units will appear from Discovery Parkway. Uh, so it's a five unit building along the southeast corner and then a four and then a three and then a four and then a three again uh, as you move to the northwest. In addition to clarifying how architecture will be varied between the five buildings, this diagram also clarifies how the topography of block 25 will result in uh, more elevated buildings on each block. So it's a little harder to see here, but you can kind of tell that the topography of the site steps up. You need fewer stairs to get to uh, this town home and then fewer stairs kind of at, at this end. Uh, the elevation is just greater and it kind of dips in the middle. So I think I said that backwards. You actually need more stairs kind of towards this end and at this end, but the, uh, it's bowed in the middle. Uh, as mentioned, Thrive has provided uh, two sets of ele elevation drawings. The color version is shown here. Uh, and this is really just to help clarify the color schemes, the four color schemes that they're proposing. Uh, color scheme four is proposed for lots one through three. On the front elevation, the white uh, body one color will be applied to the board and batten areas, while the green body two color will be applied to the horizontal lap siding. A grayish brown color uh, will appear on the fascia, trim around the windows and doors, and on the porch posts. Uh, front doors will be painted with the accent color, which is a purple uh, within this color scheme. Uh, rear elevations are again largely defined by that uh, horizontal uh, lap siding and uh, green uh, body two type color. It is broken up uh, color wise by both the differences in the garage color and then the interior unit has the white finish as well. And then this just shows you the color changes that occur on those enhanced elevations uh, underneath um, the gable roof. Uh, Thrive's four color schemes are better, better illustrated here. Each of the townhomes will have certain consistencies, so the roof is all the same color, the main body one color is all the same, where the difference really occurs is in the body two colors and then, then the accent colors, otherwise the garage doors and the trims all uh, proposed to be finished similarly, and Thrive is showing two different stone types. So one of the technical corrections was just that we get a little bit more clarification as to which of these stones go with which of the uh, schemes that are proposed. Um, and we'll continue to work on that with the applicant. Uh, the landscape plan for block 26 is illustrated here. Uh, it shows the proposed landscaping within all the outlots, and then it also shows the landscaping that's proposed uh, on the front of the lots, which is all uh, on private property. Uh, and we'll re require some retaining walls. We have some perspective images that help clarify that design here in a second. Outlots B, D, and C are proposed along Discovery and are shown to be densely landscaped outlot B uh, in the southeast corner, the bottom right here, um, is the largest public space proposed. It has been designed to include a lawn area uh, with landscape boulders for seating or play. Outlot C will provide the connection uh, between Incline Lane and Discovery. Uh, it also includes a, a bench and the um, mailbox clusters uh, designed for Thrive's uh, units here on Block 26. And then Outlot D just kind of helps wrap um, it's also going to be landscapes. So it's a consistent band with what's landscaped on the private uh, private lots and just helps kind of define that corner. Uh, and then there is landscape proposal just for the, the corners of each of the uh, southern sides of that incline lane in order to help define that entry into that drive. Um, all outlots will be owned and maintained by RC Superior and all landscaped areas will be irrigated. Thrive also included these two perspective images as an exhibit with their proposal to help illustrate that landscaping. So you can see the, the tiered system, and then you can also see 
the individual staircases that go to each unit. Um, in short, you know, this also illustrates that their setbacks are more or less the minimum required to, to come up with this or to make up this grade difference. There's no landing, it's just straight stairs that lead you up to, to these units. So there'll be a retaining wall to help tier the landscaping. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like from, a, from an angled view. So staff has reviewed all the required application drawings, uh, including the drainage utility photometric and irrigation sheets shown here. Um, for compliance and where necessary, we've added conditions or technical corrections to ensure compliance with town standards. So staff is recommending approval of this proposal based on the conditions outlined here. Uh, there are a handful of technical corrections that staff's related in the, uh, through the PC memo as well as offline. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Also, uh, I guess provide direction as to whether or not you want to see the 3D rendering now or you want to uh, transition to the applicant's presentation. Does anybody have any questions for Stephen before we? The only question I have, Stephen, and I get confused on this, when we say the land, can you go back to the like where the landscaping was showed? We showed. So who's uh, back one slide? The, yeah, one? that one. So all of this nice landscaping that'll take a few years to, to grow. Who, who's responsible for that? That will be um, private on the private property. So it'll be the private landowners. But my understanding is that the covenants that they agree to ensures that they maintain and keep up that landscaping. But Okay, so it's not RC Superior. It's not. It's not. The, it's on private property. It's on private yeah. property. Yep, yeah. and it starts from the back of the sidewalk. So um, there will be. This is an entire. I mean, you can kind of see the street trees, but there is a tree lawn. Yeah. And a sidewalk that's within the right of way, and then on the back of the sidewalk, that's where the private property starts, and that's all uh, individually maintained. Just to build on that, between the buildings, not not the outlot C, but the the other two spaces between the buildings. Um, is that I was trying to figure out what that is. is. Is that landscaped? It's landscaped. Um, is there a path? Can no, you walk so the only them? path is uh, throughout lot C. So okay. the the lots. Um, I mean, is it realistic with how wide is that 10 feet? They're or? anywhere between eight and uh, closer to 10 feet. But uh, but out lot C. Out lot C is the main one. Yeah, and that, that is one. on an out lot that yeah. RC Superior would be responsible for maintaining. But this is private property between the units. So and we do who's, who's that responsible stuff. for that. It is the individual landowner, so it'd be treated the same way as their front yards would. But there's so is it like split down the middle and right down the middle? Okay. For okay. That's where And is it reasonable is. to think that we can maintain growth right. in between those buildings? Is that being done now? Or we our landscape architect consultant reviews this for, you know appropriateness in terms of shade and tolerance and all that type of stuff so okay it's looked at in that and regard. the plan is to put plants in there that'll survive limited sunlight and correct okay yeah. all right and that's irrigated it's all irrigated and that's all irrigated okay any other questions for steven you guys want to see the 3d now or do you want to have them do their presentation and then look at it afterwards You want to see the 3D now? Sure. I think, I think that helps me yeah. when they when when we start speaking about it. it helps yeah. Sounds good. Let's do it. And it's the coolest part of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right after my presentation. Right after Steve's presentation. <laughs> Just clarify. Good evening. Chase Mullen with MIG. Here's the, uh, the backside, we're looking north here largely. Uh, this is the kind of newly approved um, Block 25 across the street from it.
Is this reflecting the elevation, that dip that we were shown? Correct, it does. It looks, okay, it looks really flat. Gets pre it gets pretty flat at eye level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you can start to see a little bit of kind of that. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any particular vantage points? I'd like to go over to Outlot D and see the that corner of Central Park Avenue and Incline and Discovery. Is that pretty representative of the intended landscape, or just? Just stuff in it. Yeah, okay. obviously. Yeah, that's it's fine. obviously just just the kind of the major. Yeah, it's one of the yeah, just double, that's, that's cool. That's a big, it's a big area. And then can I look at outlot C in the middle? Yeah. So there will be okay. So I see the walkway. If we could see just between the buildings, one of, one of them, I don't care which. But. <clears throat> yeah. That seems like that's going to get used to walk through, which is probably fine. <laughs> is that intended to be like gravel? Uh, you know, Stephen, in the in between the buildings. Okay. Sure. No, that's fine. Well, gravel is important because people will walk through there. So, I mean, I think that's just a reality. Can, can you just look at? Um, I think it's lot 19, the last one there, uh, just to see how people back out of there at that garage. I know you said you had the fire district. I just wanted to see. It's pretty tight. I guess they're backing into the sidewalk, probably, right? Or backing out, across the Right, depending on how you're going. Yeah. Or backing in and just flying the road. <laughs> it's some. <laughs> like the skid marks. <laughs> yeah, they, they got left over from a the kind of turning rate turning <laughs> movement study. <laughs> Total of six. Where were the other two? Just, Another red six. Yeah. Oh, down there. Okay, got it. All right. <clears throat> I assume there's enough room at the end of incline for that last car to back out and not hit the landscape. That true we look at that that there's uh, there's a there's an appropriate amount of room for that last on lot 19 yeah yeah uh, we looked at it no lot one to back out and yeah it looks like there is just so they can back out and not hit the and have plenty of room right? yeah they have room so the it's only it's a 23 foot wide minimum uh paved lane and the intent is for it to only serve these uh units on this side of the road so the application that we're currently reviewing is proposing access off of Central Park Circle. So it won't be a shared shared alley in that sense. 
Okay. We'll share it for parking perhaps, but not for access to garages. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to see on the 3D? Oh, thank you. That was thank awesome. You. Appreciate it. Um, any other questions for Stephen before we go on to uh, developer presentation? Uh, let's see. Nope. All right. So we have an applicant presentation. Yeah. Good evening. <clears throat> Bill Jang, Cersei Superior. Uh, glad to see you all here. Uh, so first, I just wanted to quickly uh, make an introduction and, and say a big thank you to, to Thrive and to Jay for uh, sticking around and, and being here tonight. Um, Thrive's been working on this project uh, since 2016, over two years ago, um, which ultimately went to an FTP hearing in April of last year that got continued to July and then ultimately got denied because of concerns over Block 14, which at the time was all part of the same FTP application. Um, that's why we're seeing this again during that whole process of design and feedback with the town board. Um, we, we did hear, instead of the original three-story that was proposed for this block, we wanted to <clears throat> bring that scale down to a two-story product that could have adequate um, ceiling heights and answer some of the other concerns that the trustees had last year, um, which Thrive responded with this product. I think it's a, it's a great product. They've built it before. Um, really handsome architecture and uh, certainly consistent with the PD and, and cohesive with the rest of the development. Um, so it's exciting to see in the 3D, you can see block 25 that was just approved. You can kind of feel that whole discovery courtyard or uh, discovery uh, parkway come to life with the buildings on both sides. I actually, I wish we had this 3D last week because there was some concern over difference in height between block 25 and block 26. And you can see in this because of the height difference and that sort of grand stairway that these units have and also the nice tall roof pitches there's actually very little height difference between the the top of the roof on block 26 here and the and the approved heights on block 25 so that's nice to see um just to quickly answer the landscape maintenance question again uh, the metro district will be responsible for for maintenance of those outlots so that the piece you can walk through on outlot C and, and the um, outlot D with the larger landscape, that'll be maintained by the Metro District. All the front yard landscaping will be maintained by the private property owners and, and ultimately their property. Um, but there are CCNRs in place that the Metro District can first notify and then fine, and then ultimately it can actually go in and replace people's landscape for them and charge them back if it needs to. And um, so the Metro District does have pretty broad reaching uh, enforcement um, rights under under the CCNRs to make sure that that all stays maintained the way it's supposed to and keeps looking good for a long time. So with that, I'll transition over can to ask, Jay. Can I ask one question? Yeah. So do all of the individual property owners, do they all have their own sprinkler systems and yeah. things to water all, that they control and that they're... Got it. That's right. Okay. I'm still just struggling with in-between the buildings. Yep. Right. So still, still struggling with in-between the buildings and one whose sprinkler systems watering in between the buildings and is a landscaping minimal enough that you know you don't end up with a property dispute because a tree split down the middle and it died right so right. you know i mean if it's simple landscaping it doesn't matter right very much i'm sure but i'm still kind of baffled by i'll, I'll let i'll let jay answer the specific landscaping on, on the smaller pieces between buildings that's treated like a side yard like you would treat any normal subdivision where you have single family residences or anything else and you have space between the buildings. The side yard is split in half and half of it's your property and half of it's your neighbor's property. Um, a tree will be planted on one side or the other of the property line, I would assume. And so it's either your tree or your neighbor's tree. Okay. Well, uh, there's room to do that. That's and fine. We'll, we'll need to make sure that that's, that's the case on their detailed landscaping plan for these small ones. Um, for, for this bigger one that has, you know, more substantial landscaping, for the end here and the bigger end here, those will all be maintained and, and property of the Metro District. Yeah. So that's not the yeah. not really question. And, and so each individual property owner, if they wanted to zero scape the front of their place and not do any landscaping, just rocks, and they could do that or not? There's a, so, there, so the Metro District has a design review committee okay. um, that ultimately has the approval rights for any changes from the original 
design. So the, the Metro District um, specifies Thrive as an original builder, okay. and Thrive is by those means allowed to install all the improvements to this FTP standards. If any, if any property owner wants to change anything from then on, as far as color of their house or type of roof or change the color of their door or anything like that, um, or change their landscaping, they make an application like you typically would do an HOA. They make an application to the Metro District Design Review Board, who then is, is made up of Design Review Board um, members typically or other community members who would hear the request for, uh, for design variation and either approve or deny. There's also a pretty um, robust set of design guidelines under the Metro District CCNRs that talk about types of plants and colors that you're allowed to do and that kind of thing. So ultimately, yes, someone could choose to zero escape, but it would be subject to design review approval by the Metro District. Thank you. Excuse me. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. I'm excited to be back before you. Um, I want to jump right into If you could just give us your name and, and oh, company. Okay. Sorry. sorry about that. Um, my name is Jay Garcia. I'm with Thrive Home Builders. Um, I, I recognize some of you from when I was here last April, I believe. Um, so some of these slides will be review, but uh, I, I felt that they were important enough for the new members to be able to see them and then also um, just review for the, the members on the board that uh, on the planning commission that have already seen these, just to kind of refresh your memory on who we are, not the typical home builder, uh, and we are proud of kind of our good track record. And we think that we align very closely with the values of not just downtown Superior, but the town of Superior as a whole. Um, so all that being said, I mean, I think everybody's kind of familiar with the town of Superior. Um, but you know, it's something that we don't always see in the local jurisdictions that we that we work in. Um, how the goals that are just posted right out there on on the, the website for for green green building program, and the, these are goals that we feel like um, align with our values, our core values. But we also feel like we could help the town meet. And you know, we're not used to seeing hers rater information on right there available on uh, on the website for the local jurisdiction. So. Uh, kudos to everyone here that kind of supports that and embraces that. The environmental initiatives and programs, again, that's just really cool. So I, I wanted to make sure that I brought that up again. That is kind of reviewed from the last uh, presentation that I gave. But the fact that, you know, Superior is a solar friendly community, um, just the, the opportunities that are out there for our homeowners, our home buyers, uh, with the solar rebate programs, and just low interest financing. And the stuff that's, that's available to, um, to these buyers and we think that they're really going to value we're kind of a niche builder anyways and uh, energy efficiency and health are really kind of at our core and so we see this as a, a good match um, again this is uh you know from 2018 uh, it was the same back in 2017 when we presented to you guys uh, the the goals for the town board for su supporting environmental sustainability and, and you know other goals that are listed on this on this list um, so who we are as a home builder, again, this will be a review for some of you, but um, everything on the left side of the screen is just kind of an example of what I presented last spring. Uh, on the right side of the screen uh, is what has been updated since last spring. So we, we um, were since awarded uh, uh, two grand awards from the Department of Energy, and we were also named Builder of the Year for 2017. Um, I'm very proud of those. Uh, we're also proud of the fact that you know we're not trying to brag about this stuff but a lot of builders will stand up and say that they are really good home builders we have the third party verification from not just the local HBA but you know the Department of Energy and the, the EPA and the US Green Building Council um, you know professional builder magazine that's a national publication for the National Home Building Association we're builder of the year so it's stuff that that we're proud of and I think that it warrants mentioning um, so last year we got uh, three grand awards for housing innovation from the Department of Energy. So that keeps our, our streak intact uh, six consecutive years. That's by far the longest of anybody. We received two EPA Indoor Air Plus Leadership Awards. So that kind of speaks to our values of indoor air quality and health of the home itself. Um, this is part of who the company is. You know, it's more of the core values and the integrity of who we are as an actual company. 
Uh, and so we're very, very proud of our National Housing Quality Award. And then um, we were named, uh, one of our homes was named Green Home of the Year by Green Builder Magazine. So that's, that's really cool stuff. Um, what we bring to this particular site is energy efficiency, uh, sustainable power and energy within our homes, uh, the healthy homes and cleaner air that we offer with just intrinsically the design of the product type. And then we do this with um, just our historical knowledge and tried and true building science technology. Um, as far as the site design goes, we've really worked hard to kind of embrace the sustainability of the site, uh, really um, work with the solar orientation. We feel that by you know putting our best urban design foot forward, we really kind of provide high design at the street curb for that curb appeal. Um, we are embracing the urban density that is, is a core value of downtown Superior and really, again, just tying into that walkability and really serving as sort of the multimodal um, community that was originally envisioned. Uh, so, you know, we tie into the interconnected streets and pedestrian trail blocks. We have uh, connections to trails and bike paths, enhanced crossings that facilitate community access, development pattern that really encourages the walking and biking and alternative modes of transportation that I mentioned before. And all that kind of promotes you know, not just the health within the home, but getting outside of the home um, and part of the overall sustainability of the community as a whole. So I love this exhibit because it, you know, it shows how we're kind of just interconnected with all the different, you know, bike paths, pedestrian ways uh, that have been planned throughout the downtown Superior community. Um, the site design going a little bit Further, all these buildings front onto the tree-lined streets to kind of help define that urban edge. So it was definitely intentionally done. Vehicular circulation is brought to the rear of the home and guest parking is located internally to the block, very intentionally done. Um, so the front doors facing the streets allow those homes to kind of live towards the streets. Uh, there's been studies with eyes on the streets and the, the sort of safety aspects that that, that provides um, and, and really just kind of enhancing the overall urban nature and, and character of the community and then you know these central green spaces that, that we can orient towards with the mid pedestrian pass throughs and enhanced crossings so this is kind of the zoomed in site plan Stephen did a very great job of kind of providing everyone with the context of the site um, I don't think I need to go into too much depth but again all the units fronting on to Discovery Parkway um, with internal guest parking located in the alley itself uh, internal access to the individual units from for vehicular access is from the rear and then the pedestrian access out to discovery parkway and the pedestrian right away um so oops i was going the wrong way apologies uh parking again i think that this has been covered i wanted to make sure that it was in there that we're exceeding um, what is required and even if everybody did upgrade uh, to a third bedroom we would still be exceeding what was required for those for those homes um, Here's kind of the color rendering of the site plan. It kind of shows how it lays into the context. Uh, Chase did a great job with his 3D massing, just showing how we kind of correspond with um, block 25 in this location. As, as we kind of come down the gradation of the hill, there's a forthcoming application for the, the uh, single family detached residential that will kind of tie into our homes that, that tie into the urban core as far as the gradation into the site, transition into the neighborhood. Um, and then these are uh, what I presented at the conceptual review hearing back in November. I, have, I believe some of you were there for that. So we kind of looked at both how this would transition into blocks 14 and 15 to the northeast of the park as well. Uh, these are just some example images of the type of architectural elevations that we've been looking at and kind of how that will feel with the vegetation as it's oriented towards the street. Uh, this is that fiveplex. Um, kind of on that, that southeast corner of, of block 26 right here. So it kind of shows you how the terracing and landscaping will be oriented. Um, and then, you know, as far as the product mix goes, it's all two-story townhomes, again, that are less than the 32-foot height limit. Um, we feel that the architecture is much more dialed in. That is the benefit of having been before the Planning Commission and Town Board before. Uh, we were able to solicit feedback and uh, really kind of you know, come up with an architectural style that we feel meets the character of the surrounding community, but also the intent of uh, what the board wants to see. So this is an example of what um, Block 14 would look like, more at grade, um, uh, 
of, at the street, but how we could, could kind of tie into that that uh, particular architecture that would just be sort of down the hill. This is more indicative of what we'd be looking at for the grading that we have to kind of take up with the fronts of the homes. So you can see the stair orientation there. Uh, building height, we, we reference how it's below uh, 32 feet, but it's also uh, in compliance with the building mass diagram, including in the zoning document. Um, and they're all, all these homes will be significantly below the view shed that's also in identified in that view or in that uh, zoning document. So we've already seen these uh, elevations of the front and the rear. Here are the side elevations along with the streetscape at the bottom. Here are the color elevations, which uh, Stephen's already presented on, and the, both the enhanced side and uh, normal side elevation. And uh, the building materials and colors we are presenting and we, we do look forward to working with staff on further refining those and getting those to an approvable level but we were able to solicit feedback from our conceptual review hearing uh, back in November on, on sort of what direction to go so we, we feel a lot better about these as well um, and then just you know some more example images this gives you an opportunity to kind of see how those uh, interior floor plans will lay out um, this is off of a previous generation of similar plans, but it does kind of give you uh, a concept of how you know the open floor plan will work out. Uh, again, example images of a similar two-story type product, and then just these uh, you know more blown-up images that you've already seen. And then this is a rendering that um, we received from our, our sort of artist earlier today that gives you a little bit more of a colored perspective of what uh, Chase was able to provide already. With that, I'd like to close my presentation, open it up to questions, and uh, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have questions for the applicant. I'm going to start down here. Do you have? Yes. Um, one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the Do you have your, your mic on? Mic on? Oh, mic. Oh, no. One of the things I was noticed when I was looking at the drawings was that the drive lane is only 23 feet wide. Uh, but then you have a five feet walkway along the back of the houses uh, uh, between the garage and the driveway. And uh, th th that seems to me to be a pretty minimal amount of turning room for cars that are trying to get in and out of the garage. The, the widths over in block 15 and on Resolute were 26 feet. Uh, have you done any other developments where the driveway or the access to the garage is uh, as narrow as this? Yes, uh, that's a very good question, actually. Um, we have done developments before uh, Stapleton comes to mind, and they typically uh, develop a 16-foot wide alley section um, with, you know, dual loaded alleys or, or garages on either side of that alley, and uh, it's, it's effective. And so in this case, the fact that it is 23-foot wide and it is only a single loaded alley, um, we know, you know, just from running the simulations but also from actual built experience that, that it will function appropriately and properly. Okay, and my second question was going to be, what will the division between this development and the rest of the 30, the rest of the block the, 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 that's still coming in look like? I mean, is there any indication of how that might appear? Uh, another very good question. Uh, we envision and plan for a fence along that edge, so you can kind of see it here. And then a small little strip of what would most likely be um, uh, some sort of cobble mulch in that area, just to facilitate for drainage. Yeah, and I'll expand on that a little bit, just in the context of, of the adjacent FTP that's currently in process. Um, so Remington Homes is, is doing this FTP, all of the white shown on the remainder of Block 26 and 27. Uh, that's a two-story detached single-family product, so a much more traditional product than you've seen anywhere else in downtown Superior. That's intended to provide this soft gradient to the lower density um, existing housing in Rock Creek to the south here. So just south of this line would be the 225-foot open space buffer um, and then the existing Rock Creek neighborhood to the south of that. Uh, so those are all 46-foot wide by 70-ish foot deep single-family detached lots. And, and as we say, one of Stephen or, or Jay mentioned earlier, these homes will be um, loaded off the front with a garage door facing the street here. So this is really just a, a back fence, and this will be backyard 
for those single family uh, homes that front the street with a, with a garage off the street here. Um, so this, this really is the, the back of those lots and then, and then with the, you know, the alley really just serves these, these drive units. Um, I mean, this is just a personal prejudice on my part, but I didn't like color schemes three and four very much. I mean, the green and the gray trim, I thought looked awfully institutional and not a very friendly institution. So but I admit that that's just a personal prejudice. Question, Steve? My I, I, I like the development, so I like I like the colors. I like. I think it's. Uh, I love the look of, of the front and stuff. My questions are a little bit more probably big pic bigger picture. Um, economically, do you, are you guys concerned at all about the downturn in housing and ability to sell out this? Is that Im will that impact? Have you? What's your thought on that? Because you've got a. I mean, it came out today and it was pretty big decrease, and it seems like the last six months have been going that way. Again, I'm concerned more about selling this out, not just this one, but selling it out. What, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Well, um, uh, that, that's a good question. And I think that um, the experts that, that we've heard and listened to um, anticipate uh, the word that they use is a plateau, not necessarily a downturn. Um, but I think that uh, the, our approach to that is more to offer attainable housing. Um, that we feel people will buy regardless of the market. And by attainable, I mean in a community like this, this is um, kind of more of the, the entry level type product that uh, we feel will serve that, that attainable market. Um, we uh, definitely work hard to take you know, close tabs on, on the sales comparables of the area. And you know, everybody's kind of got their crystal ball of what will happen next, but uh, we're constantly you know, following um, market publications, but also attending, you know, professional lectures like the Urban Land Institute had their emerging trends um, presentation a couple weeks ago. Uh, so nobody truly knows, but we, we feel confident that in a, a good community like this, the buyer will always be there. Uh, last question for me, and you kind of open it up a little bit, but you said attainable. Um, how about affordable? How do you guys, do you guys, in a, because we're not addressing it in Superior, and we right. haven't we haven't chosen that as one of our goals. As you and I loved how you went to our goals and talked about what we um, we don't have affordable as something that Superior's picked. But what does Thrive do uh, as far as affordable? What's your guys' views on that? You know, it's part of our um, core values. To be honest, we we think that um, bringing sustainable, energy efficient housing to the masses is really what we're geared towards. And so um, we are the largest affordable housing builder in Stapleton and therefore in the city of Denver right now. Um, it requires very close coordination, not just with the, the local jurisdiction, but the developer as well. Um, you know, it, it essentially requires some subsidies in order to uh, achieve those affordability yeah. goals, but it is something that we have uh, experience with and we would be always interested in pursuing that in new jurisdictions as well. Okay. That's great. Thank you. On L lot B, um, you, you talk about sustainability and environmental um, through your company. Would L lot B be somewhere where we could do uh, possibly like a community garden type thing? It's a it's an area that I think that you know we've got some some nice parks throughout the entire Area, but um, just for these residents, maybe something that's a little more um, intimate and, and a, kind of a, a community garden. So sh short answer, yes, absolutely. I think that's a you know, super interesting idea. We, we do have to be a little bit careful with Metro District lands um, because the Metro District is funded by the entire downtown Superior tax base and all of the residents. The Metro District doesn't want to own or maintain anything that disproportionately benefits one owner over another. So to the extent that you tar start talking about um, an amenity here that benefits these owners more than other owners, that could be a problem for the Metro District because it's being funded by everyone's taxes, not just these owners' taxes. Um, but to the extent we could do a community garden that's open to the entire project as a whole, um, certainly that's a very interesting uh, concept and we could bring it up at a Metro District board, board hearing. Um, so, yes. <laughs> okay. 
Um, and could you go back to any one of the um, slides with the a facade? There's a, I have a quick question on, oh, go back a couple more. Right there. Yeah, one. either one, either one. Okay. What's the grayed out uh, rectangles at the bottom of each of those? Ah, down here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that is the basement egress window. Okay, so that's what I just, thought. I just yeah. didn't see it anywhere. Okay. And yeah, you then, can see it on the, you kind of see it here as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it just, uh, they, they were appearing everywhere, and that's what I assumed they were. I just I couldn't remember. Right. Um, and on that one there, where is that egress coming out? I Good mean, question. That... So what we're showing here, um, the side elevation showed uh, the egress window for the end units. Mm -hmm. So they would both offer their egress off to the side of the home. This is for the internal unit, so that is the basements. You know, per code, you need to be able to have an egress window from that basement. So it's actually sitting up against the building. It's not out. Uh, Correct. In the yeah. front of the. Okay. Yeah. There would be a window well located. Right. Yeah, right below those sort of double windows there. Yeah, it was just the way that I was perceiving it. Just seemed a little misleading. I thought that not a tunnel, but just something that brought you out. Of, oh, yeah. Brought you out to the street level. I was like, that's actually kind of interesting. Um, and then if you could go to one of the uh, floor plans, actually the grading, I think it was a grading plan. Okay. Uh, we have the site plan included. There we go. This one? Mm, there's one on the, the paper drawings that we see that actually have the grading lines going through it. Uh, that might be. Let me see. Oh, that's sorry. That's Stephen's presentation. The FDP, that one there. Okay. There we go. Yes, yeah, so if um, you can zoom in on the actual dwelling. All right. So I see zero step, one step, three step. Right. Um, mm -hmm. At the doors, is that how many steps are going in from the garage up to the unit? Correct. And I see zero step, but it's drawn in with it looks like steps. Right. Yeah. I, that's just a, a graphical representation we would probably eliminate that for okay. part of the, the final but yes that's a, that's actually a good catch i noticed that as well okay. so those are zero step ramp entries okay so for me and up all right um can you go back to the the um the garage view the back view that we were looking at just a minute ago yes uh, yeah so uh, Front look, looks great. This just looks like a big wall of gray, and I'm just thinking about these homes behind it and other views. I, I don't think I, I'll put it in as a requirement, but that just, you know, it, it, I don't know if you can break that up a little bit more with the colors, other than just the one white piece. That just seems like a lot of big wall of, big wall of dark. Front looks great. Um, so yeah, that's one. The other is. Um, uh, we're, we're, our CAPS committee is encouraging us to talk to you about art, art before we dig and getting art commitments from, from our developers. So I'm uh, looking at Outlet B, C, and D, for that matter, uh, as opportunities for, um, for art projects. Okay. Um, can we get you to commit to working with CAPS to come up with a... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just, just, just not. That. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows I'm going to ask this at every at every meeting. So, um, but but you know, in the in outlet D, in outlet D, um, in, in caps, we'll talk to you about this. But there's there's some cool opportunities too for not to put a playground in, but you can put a structure in that's really cool that even adults or kids can do stuff on, and it's a piece of art and and looks really cool, and sure. and you know provides some entertainment, maybe you know around the edge of the community garden, but. Um, but, but because we have, you know, we have that corner on outlet D or, you know, on outlet, outlet D, you know, that that's a pretty primary corner. And then even up on outlet A or that's so B, D is on the other end. A, yeah. B, Sorry, B C, is the big one. Yes. A, C, probably less so. D again on another corner up on the other end, even a small piece of art. Um, so I would like to add that in that, that you'd be willing to communicate with CAPS sure. and, and discuss in our project for project or projects for the development. Okay. And I think that's all I have. I think that's, that's it for, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, so now we have an opportunity for public comment. If anybody would like to speak to this development, now would be the time to do it. All right. 
that's it. We're about at public, about to close the public hearing, I think, at this point. Okay. If that's Anything the case, I'll, if you don't have any other 3D images, I'll cut the new father loose and let Chase go home. Okay. He doesn't get any sleep these Anything else days. we need to see 3D? Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. That's good. All right. Okay, I close public hearing. We have time for discussion on the project or a motion if you know if we're that far along but um any, anybody want to have any anything to say in particular anything they want to change consider no, i think um from my standpoint i, I think that the, the builder has listened to everything that has come forth either from the planning commission or the town board of trustees um i love i i, I think the product is looks great um i do have a slight concern about the number of steps on the front of, of a few of the um, a few of the dwellings, but um, outside of that, you know, it's, I think it's a, a great product. And I, I also agree with your um, thought on the the back of the building, just having that one white block. It just seems it just seems like it's thrown on there. Um, I don't know how else you can break it up, um, but I I would encourage encourage that. Um, can we ask well. staff to just work with them on that and see if we yeah. can improve that or I don't think we need to put it in as a condition no. but, but, uh, yeah. but overall and I think also having um, the multi-tiered front yard um, for the homeowner and it's their responsibility to take care of um, and then having the opportunity to, to be able to submit um, for approval to change up some of the planting materials and, and do your own little bit I think that's that's a value as well because I know I've talked to a few people who you know live in um, the tighter community communities where they can't even change anything in the landscaping they just have to maintain it and uh, they don't like what's growing and they want to change it but they can't so I think that's that's a great opportunity as well yeah I, I think the only I, I love it too I think the only downside is who manages that and because I, I think about it and if I'm sitting out there, am I really going to, if I change the bush, am I really going to go to the architectural committee to ask for, to plant a new plant in there or do something? I, I, the management of it seems difficult, but I like the fact that they can do it. I just don't know how someone maintains it. It gets done in Rock Creek, that's, that's for sure. I don't know that it does. <laughs> no? yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it does. Oh, I don't <laughs> know that lots. it does. I mean, I change my plant <laughs> stuff all the time and never got it. Yeah. Never did it, so yeah, that's why I don't think it's now it's public. Yeah. So and um, what's your address again? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I'll just I echo I, I I think it's great. I think it looks good. Um, I didn't really focus on what um, what you pointed about back of the buildings, but I agree something should be done if it can be to break that up a little yeah. bit. It just seems like with the houses on the other side, it's going to be easy yep. to see. It's it's a little different than some of the ones that are you know back to back to back with each other. But yeah, and that's that's it. Otherwise, so, I, I like yeah. it. And I think also the concern about the um, the backing out and and the distance. Um, I have several friends that live in Stapleton, and I've been the driver of a vehicle um, because they needed me to drive for them in their vehicle, and I went to back out, and I had to do multiple turns, but that was that is a 16 foot alleyway. And I think a 23 is is more than enough, especially when you don't have the double back out, you know, somebody coming from the opposite direction. I think it's uh, more than sufficient in, in depth. Okay. Any comments? I'm so humbled to be enthusiastic about the comments despite my colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, everything else is fine. Okay. Anything else? No, I think it's a good looking product. I like the diverse mix happening in downtown Superior. If I was to change anything, and I won't ask for this, but like to talk about sustainability and then providing more parking spots than required to me is ironic. But um, I don't think we're there yet as a town. So <laughs> I'm, ready to, I'm ready to vote. Okay, cool. Um, the only condition I'd like to consider is just uh, um, and putting something in there that they'll, that they'll talk with the art, the Caps committee and um, look at an arts project. Uh, yeah. Is there a good way to put that in as a condition? Yeah, I think it's maybe something that we can discuss with as goes before the committee. But if there's like a condition in there, and I think um, it might not be a public works condition per se, but it's certainly something that we can discuss. 
how do we get it in a recommendation that ends up to the board? That's, I just don't want it to get lost. So, um, so one of the things I do, and you probably don't read my staff memo twice, but because uh, <laughs> it gets longer as it goes to the board, <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Um, but I do summarize your guys' uh, um, kind of discussion and the points that you bring up and um, where you've landed or what recommendations you're making, if you're making any. So I can list it as a recommendation without making it a condition if you want. Um, and I can also start sending those to you, just that, that section, portion. so that <laughs> you guys don't get overwhelmed again. Yeah, I'm okay um, if you'll if you'll make it a written recommendation okay. to the board that that um, and and that that Thrive agreed to communicate with Caps and will J communicate Garcia, with Caps. To, what's that? Or J Garcia? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize that. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, does somebody want to take a shot at this? Anybody have it up? Uh, I, I just have one question before we start the recommendation. It, it seemed like Stephen, in the um, in the one we got sent, it said there were no um, differences to code, and I thought we had the setback. Um, is that there is not an exception? So I don't know where it shouldn't say that there's no differences to code, but there there is this setback it's exception. I know it's in the memo, but in the recommendation that, that oh. we sent out, it, it says there's no differences to code. In, oh, in the resolution. In the resolution. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I will make sure that's updated. Yes. Yeah, Where so is that's that? Do we want to. Yeah. So I, I, just before we went ahead, I just as I was reading through it, because it, it seemed like only the setback was the only exception. The setback's the only exception that's being requested. Okay. So. Because it's in like the very last, it's near the bottom of the. Of the PC resolution. Okay. Yeah. If I'm right on that, you can look at it. You, you're referring to the draft resolution yeah. itself. So the planning commission finds that the applicant meets all applicable requirements of the code. Right, mm. and that's where I don't think we do. I think that's kind of a, a strict interpretation. I think we're finding that it, it, it meets it, you know, or or, right. or or justifies an exception. I mean, it's a, it's a site-specific exception. So if you go through my staff memo, it tells you how you get there. But, uh, so so it, doesn't, it doesn't violate the code as much as it the design standards or requires well, an exception from that. We can change it if you need to or, or massage it if you feel, feel it's Are you comfortable I'm not with really, the Dan? I just sure. didn't know how we handled it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's kind of a general, um, you know, essentially this is your your findings um, and then you're finding that it, that it meets the code itself. I mean, one of the criteria is that it, uh, you know, it's in compliance with the, the PD and can reflect improvements in design. So there is there is some you know, even if it's not strictly uh, following, um, you, know, you can allow for some kind of deviation. So the kind of the way that it's written is just basically saying that it's in compliance with the code itself. So the code would allow certain deviations, in other words. So that's why it's in compliance. You're the lawyer. So you're comfortable yeah. keeping this yeah. language <laughs> and... I'm sorry? Uh, you're comfortable keeping this language yes. And, yes. and with the exception <laughs> of the change yep. to the setbacks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody want to take a stab at this? I'm going to do it. I've got it up. Yeah. Okay. Or, oh, what's that? Sure. Okay. What's the number? One. Okay. Oh, that's right. This yeah. is our first one. It's 2019. Okay. Um, all right. Town of Superior Planning Commission Resolution Number PC-1, Series 2019. Um, it's a resolution of the Planning Commission of the Town of Superior recommending approval of a major final subdivision plat and final development plan for a portion of Lot 1, Block 26 of the Superior Town Center, uh, case number FP dash two zero one eight dash zero seven and FDP dash two zero one eight dash zero four. Um, let's see with the following conditions. Should I read those off as listed or just read them off? You can just say as listed. If you're not just, making just, a change. Just, say as, just as, as, as as conditions listed in the in the proposed in the in the proposed resolution. Uh, second. Okay. Who is who seconded? Harper. Second. Oh. I think yep. his mic was on. Oh, microphone. Yeah, is yeah, your mic on or, or into on. your mic? Yeah. It is on. It's on. <laughs> all right, it's on. Okay. It's on. <laughs> all right, we got you. All right, all in favor? All right. All right. And it's unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we do have another side. All right, staff announcements, are you gonna give them a minute? Yeah, I got a couple. Okay. 
I know. Be out here by 8.15, depending Should on these fast? announcements. <laughs> um, so just to give everyone a heads up, there is a town board meeting next Monday on the 28th. Uh, there are two amendments to the code that are being considered to uh, chapter 16 in particular. So I wanted to bring them to your attention. Uh, one is uh, an ordinance in order to remove um, the vacation process uh, from going to planning commission for review and comment. So when we have an easement dedication that's that's done, it just goes to the board and it's generally on consent agenda. So vacating uh, the same instrument seems like it's more appropriate to go just to the board. Otherwise, you guys don't have a review and comment period. Um, typically, or you have a review and comment period, typically you don't have like a consent agenda and I would hate for you guys to kind of come just to meet to discuss, you know, an easement vacation. So it was, from what I understand, it was something that was supposed to be done in that cleanup from 2015 before I started, didn't get done. Um, but it's the direction of the board to, to get this done. So it just makes it a little cleaner and easier for these changes to be made. Um, Typically, can we, can we make a request that we're notified when that happens, probably, that, that, that it just that comes up? Somebody's coming. Yeah, I can yeah, certainly just that it's happened give you a heads up or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, when and I can do the same thing for when vacations kind of come forward. But when, when those do happen, or I mean, when easement dedications come forward, um, they become, you know, somewhat ownership of the town for the town to take on an easement. So that's why they, they weigh in on it. Um, but they... You know, typically it's a consent agenda item and they're already meeting. So um, it's more of an efficiency thing that is my understanding for the motivation for this change. And the second um, was something that was on the town board's work plan uh, discussed over the summer. And it was to make some changes to allow for more minor um, cell improvements, I think under a height of 40 feet. Um, so when, and it's really the objective of, for the town to actually have better cell coverage in Superior. So there's these small cell facilities that Verizon has talked to the town about, um, and we are making changes to the code, to our code in order to allow them without having to go through a special use review. So that's my understanding. I haven't had a, a lot of time to delve into it, and it's something that's come from the board through the town manager's office. So, um, but and those two things are being considered on Monday nights. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Yeah. The, sorry, sorry, Steve. So the other, reason for the amendment is there was a state law that was passed last year concerning small cell facilities requiring each municipality to modify their code in compliance with it so it's something that the town needs to do to come into compliance with the state law and and so what's the difference what, what are we changing again from is it a height I know that there is a, it's, it's, it's something allowing that's a under 43, 40 feet in, in height but uh, I think the general understanding that I have is that it's like a co-location type of thing. So it would be on a street light that's already established. They can put up a, a cell tower that, and it's more like these smaller, smaller scale ones that help relay one from another. So it's instead of like a big tower that you see along highway 93 or something like that, these are uh, less obtrusive. Um, so things scale. under 43 feet, under 40 feet in height, or under 40 yeah. feet in height, just don't have to go through a special review process. Right. And I'm not as familiar with, Okay. The, the update that Dan mentioned, but a lot of a lot of the towns uh, or any municipalities jurisdiction over cell towers has become less and less over the years. Yeah. As uh, so, I, I think this, this law was needed for five G networks. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, I'm not fully aware of kind of the technical That's why the aspects state. of it. But. Yeah. I mean, essentially what the, the law requires is that um, it provides cell facilities uh, the, I mean, the ability to, to place their, their small cells within a right of way that have been as of right, um, you know, uh, designation for doing that. So, I mean, it's a pretty strong, um, you know, law in, in, in the favor of small cell facilities. So this is something that, you know, we just, uh, the town just needs to comply with and to modify the code accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, is it just staff approval then at that point, or is it this is for those types of things, or do they, so they don't have to go through a review process, but does it change the approval process? Yeah, it's, it's more of a, an administrative um, proceeding. You know, it's the way it's kind of drafted is that they would put in an application. There's a certain period of time um, 
that the town would have to to review their application. And if, you know, it's not reviewed within I forget what it is a 60 or 90 day. It's it's approved as of right. And there's these kind of these different designations um, for whether it's small cell or whether it's a, a, a different wireless facility. It usually has different designations and how they're how they're approved and the process that they go through. So. Um, but yeah, there's been, okay. we, you know, with, with our clients that we've done a number of these, uh, um, you know, amendments to bring them into compliance with the, the state and federal law. So, Does the town get paid for that when they when they do those things or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a certain, um, I mean, I haven't actually looked at the town of Superior's one closely, you know, to tell you the truth, but yeah. there is a certain, um, in the, the state, and I think the, the federal law allows a certain amount. And there's actually an MLA, a master license agreement, that's also going to be um, reviewed by the, the board on Monday. Also, that is actually an agreement between, <coughs> you know, Verizon and the town that sets kind of like the standards as to that, how they're supposed to go through and get, you know, approval and what type of fee, if any, that they're. That they're and ma I assume maintenance. For yeah, them. yeah, like okay. maintenance and the procedure they have to follow. Yeah, okay. things like that. So. So. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to be put on all the play structures in every park. Right. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> It'll be everywhere. <laughs> so if you leave your car parked in the right of way, it could be on your antenna. Exactly. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Yeah, just a couple, couple more. Um, moving on from the town board meeting next week, uh, we have a PC meeting uh, scheduled for the 5th of February now, and it's to discuss a lot line adjustment for uh, the Element Hotel. Um, so this one will involve uh, a minor boundary line adjustment between um, the Element Hotel and Park 2 uh, of the Superior Town Center. And what's what's really occurring is what was a, a, a private detention area for the hotel um, due to the changes in, in Marshall and uh, adjacent development has become more regional. So instead of them taking our water, they wanted to give us the land in order to take their water and our water on our property. So uh, the park's enlarging slightly in order to um, take on that detention area, which is now more regional in nature than it was originally uh, thought to be when they came through with their FTP. So it's pretty straightforward. It shouldn't take us long to discuss, but it involves a lot line adjustments, um, an easement vacation and an easement dedication. Um, so that's on. No, it's it's a. Uh, it's water from um, mostly the Marshall Road right away. And I think even maybe the parking lot that was uh, first center point to the, to the west. So it's regional in nature and it may take some stuff from, but it's not, a, you know, it's not, it's certainly not of the scale that that former detention park was. It's a much smaller uh, detention area. Um, and I think it involves like 1500 square feet of land or something like that. So it's really not a, a big uh, land exchange. Um, and then uh, as a reminder, we're having the work session with the town board on the 11th. Um, I haven't gotten any additional edits from anyone um, on, uh, on Clarion's uh, recommendation. Um, so if you guys have anything else, if then send it to me. If not, then I will just send uh, kind of a summary of what we discussed after their meeting, um, likely tomorrow to, to Darcy and their team, which was, you know, the um, I can't remember the, the verbiage offhand, but uh, preferred, or you guys, it was, it was uh, Ben's, Ben's potential, 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 yeah. potential paths, potential yeah, preferred. versus, uh, <laughs> yeah, rather than just paths. So we'll, we'll get them to have some stronger language on the, uh, the marketplace recommendations. Um, but, and then I'll provide any other comments that we, that I gleaned. But again, I hadn't, haven't had a chance to go back and uh, review those minutes and, and summarize, or the, the video and summarize it yet, so. And if you could, if you get those to me, I, I talked to Martin this week or uh, earlier today about just pulling together an initial okay. presentation and okay. introduction um, of Clarion to the board at okay. that meeting. So yeah, I, I'm just it, just a summary of what we've been doing and and what we're recommending or what we're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you if you want, I mean, the only thing I guess that came came out of me thinking about our discussion after Clarion left last week was just. Uh, you know, however, if we, if we want to kind of digest that a, a little bit more for the board and, and, and give them recommendations either in uh, like a short staff memo that kind of gives them a week to kind of think about it and then know how to 
uh, tackle reading that document, which is kind of long, uh, or whether or not you want to just tee it up at the meeting with a short You mean give an opportunity to see it ahead of time? or You can. Like, if you okay. were to write something, you know, a memo from PC saying this is what our recommendation are based off, like, to make it a little bit more yeah. digestible. So well, I'm, I'm hoping to get it to, it to uh, Martin. I, I probably can't work on it till Sunday, okay. uh, but he said I, I think the – he has to get things to Matt and somebody else that that the next week, Monday, Tuesday, next Correct. week. Correct. It goes out on Tuesday. Yeah. On Tuesday, so. right? So, um, so yeah, I guess we'll yeah. Let me get that written and then we'll see if it makes sense. It to, would go out on the fifth, the same day. If if we're meeting on the eleventh, uh, it would go out on Tuesday the fifth. So it's not next Tuesday. It's not ne yeah. So yeah, he said we had next week to work yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he said I, if I got done Sunday, that would give us a week to kind of work on it. And, okay. And if we can confirm what the recommendation was at the end of that meeting, I'll, I'll try to. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the video might yeah, be up already too. I don't know. I can look back and look at it as I well. I believe so. it was two two parts because we thought yeah. that the one was pretty easy to make a rec recommendation on, and the marketplace needed a little further discussion. So. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, one quick question: How do we uh -huh. define um, where building height starts? So, and I'm specifically thinking of these townhomes. So, you know, all of a sudden what was what was a house sitting on street level then brought in a bunch of fill and now good. it's up two feet and then they go up 30 feet is it from that new ground level that they got to put in or or was it supposed to be from street level so the i mean i don't have the definition in front of me but we and, can just and i don't mean for this you know for this proposal not our town but the ones over here in original town right the, they they came in and, and the house that was sitting there was dead level with the street and now the dirt now the 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 lot is now at least probably two feet higher off the road than it was before. So now is the building height from the street level, or is it from the from where they where they piled in the dirt? You know, right? because I want to address that in Northwest Superior. If we're gonna, you know, I just want to have that in mind. If you can bring in three feet of dirt and get your house up an extra three feet, <laughs> right? So yeah. this this kind of answers floor. part of it. So when you have a uh, change in grade on a on a site. Uh, it's basically the the midpoint of that grade. So uh, these ones are a little a little different than what you'd normally see. If you had a walkout basement, it might look a little bit easier. This is kind of like a walkout front. So the front of the the homes are probably um, maybe a little bit shorter than than the back. And then it's really kind of side to side that the elevation changes a little bit more on these. So the the midpoint of grade um, is the center of every. Uh, building elevation and then it's the average of those four centers so there's going to be one basic you know grade on on every property um, so that answers part of the question and then you measure from that average grade so for this one i think it's 55 77 something or something like that um, but you can kind of come in so they figured out what their 55 37 17 so essentially 32 feet from that get you up to this elevation and this is the worst case scenario and it's under by you know probably a foot or two yeah um, but your point about bringing in fill yeah um, if somebody was to berm you know for these bigger blocks it's it's a little uh a little different because the, the overlap gradient kind of occurs over the, the whole site but if you were, you you can't just cheat the system by bringing in a bunch of fill right next to the house and saying now my house is you know three feet shorter because I, I just put in a bunch of grade next to it. There's a clause in, in how you measure grade uh, is that you can come back out 10 feet from the from the foundation in order to get back to the natural grade. So you can't just put a berm up against the side of the house. So that's what the one thing in our code that helps address well, it. Well, this, this wasn't a berm. I mean, I think they brought in, they brought fill, in fill, right? And so the, the base level of that house, the driveway now goes up. This happened to the house next door to us, right? So we're actually sitting below street level on 4th. We're at street level on Cole Creek, just by the way it works, right? Right, 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 yeah. Out of the water. And the house next door was brought in a long time ago when, uh, before we were there, not long, uh, somewhere in the late 80s, I think. And they built it up three feet, put in a basement. And so now, you know, it, it, it was always an issue with their, their water just they runs built into our... up or just the, the foundation wall? Oh, no. Great the grade, the whole grade of that lot. If you look at, at the houses on either side, they're up about three feet and they build a basement. And whether they bermed up or what they did, I don't know, but it's it looks like 
um, they, they graded it and then brought the house in, built a basement up to that new grade level and then put the house on top. And then, so over here on the townhomes, it looked like they did the same thing. They, they, they raised the level of that lot because that, the house that used to be on there sat at street level. And now they're up because they, they you know, probably putting in basements and they want to get as far up away from the water table as they can, right? And that's what they did for us next door. Um, but I'm like, okay, does that mean that our height limits are out the window? And maybe they're under anyway. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, right. how, do, how do we, you know, how do you watch that? Do you, I mean. Well, I, I, I was aware of that one and I sent it to Ernie to, to be sure. And the drawings that he got showed, I think one, that they were closer to 30 feet in height to begin with. But I think that the, the measurement they were showing was, was done accurately, but whether or not I don't know. Yeah, and do we care? Do we care if people build up the grade? And, like, well, that's you know, the we come in that. and build up the grade in our house to bring it up to fourth? And I mean, do you, does that go through an approval process or um, grading in and of itself? Or, br br yeah, bringing in fuel right. to raise. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Raise I mean, that would be grading. Um, but I'd have to check with the public works. They're, they're the ones that handle the grading permit. Okay. Um, whether or not there's a certain threshold, like how many cubic yards of earth you yeah. can move in without triggering a grading permit, I'm not, not 100% okay. aware. I just want to be, I'd like to be aware of that as we start talking about original town and the, and the, and the plans. But the intent, I, I think that, you know, my interpretation at least, and I haven't talked to the, you know, manage, manager's office about it, but my, my interpretation of that grading is that, you know, because they give you this allowance to measure 10 feet out, it's, you know, to prevent people from firming up against it or make it more costly. Uh, but, uh, the intent is that you give some allowance to come back to where the natural grade was and measure from that natural grade. So, uh, you know, people are trying to circumvent that standard. I, I think we would we would look at it closely in order to, to discourage it. So, okay. But, is that in our code somewhere? That it's language? it's basically two different definitions. You got to look at the height definition to figure out how you measure height. Yeah. And then height references grade. And then you got to go back and figure out how grades measured in order to. Yeah. It, okay. it could be better. Okay. But uh, that's, that's how it's done. No worries. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Oh. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Nope. Okay. We're adjourned. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks.